Okay, back at it again with some more videos. My name is Mazibs and this is just a review. Now I'd like to thank you for watching the previous few videos, but I'd like to ask you to like a video when you like it, because that helps me. Comments if you wanna add to the discussion or probably just help me out and just say like I'm doing a good job or a bad job because that helps me out as well. And subscribe gives me a psychological lift and increases the reach of this channel. So do those three things and we'll dive in straight with this episode. Now let's talk about hip hop. Hip hop is a lot of things. It's a culture of dress, of thought, of music, of dance, of romance. Hip hop is a lot. But today we're gonna talk about hip hop in music, specifically in rap music. You know, 4-4, mostly black people do it, or disenfranchised societies, syncopated beats and rhythmic rhymes over it. That's rap music. And it's come a long way from its beginning as a genre of sampling and beatboxing and straight rhymes about going to the store with your favorite type of shoe. Nowadays, rap music is more descriptive about what it means to be in a society. Hip hop these days is given the responsibility of showcasing the ills and maybe the virtues of a society. You know, every artist is supposed to have this goal to be this profound rapper like a Tupac or Kendrick Lamar, right? Yeah, that's, that's hip hop to everyone, isn't it? It's telling your stories. And you know what? I hate the discussion of real hip hop. You know, the argument that mediocre white kids who have a mic in an empty house before daddy gets home start on the internet. The argument that looks at rapper X and says, Man, I miss real hip hop. Not this mumble rap bull, this is garbage, this is whack hip hop, this bubblegum music. To that argument, I have to say, look, there is no real hip hop. Like I said, the culture of hip hop is a form of expression. An artist talks about what he or she can at that moment. So if a rapper releases a song about smoking the most weed and respectfully smacking these booty butt cheeks at the club, then good at him or her. That's their life. I mean, Kanye West is rich, right? So what else do you expect Kanye West to talk about other than rich nigga shit. We can't just ask for enlightenment for the sake of enlightenment. But, you know, I also get the argument. Sometimes we need somebody who's profound, who just doesn't make us look like idiots as people who are practicing this hip hop culture. <laughs> but generally, I just hate the culture of gatekeeping, especially gatekeeping within arts. That, hey, this is not our sound, or hey, there's not enough melanin on you, so stop rapping. Or hey, this is a bad story to be telling. Or hey, this is not quite what we're used to. The, you know, the evolution of arts was always people taking uh, 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 an established art form and then twisting it and going against the grain and pissing the people off who were currently the purveyors of that art form. You look at Baroque, classical, you look at expressionism and classical music or romanticism, you look at imperialism, minimalist, it's all polar opposites or slight tweaks of each other and that's how these art forms came about. Now that I think of it, there's not much gatekeeping within Africa or in Zimbabwe particularly, in the hip hop scene. There's not much of that. I want you to think of the country at the moment. The divided mess we're in. We're divided by gender, we're divided by race, we're divided by politics, we're divided by age. But I think by far the biggest demarcation in this country is by class, economics. And in most cases, the demarcation can be visualized by a straight line. And by this straight line, I'm talking about the line between the north and the south of Harare. See, the north and the south sort of symbolizes rich and poor. The history of urban development within Harare stems from colonialization. The first suburb that was occupied by European settlers was Avondale. And then what ended up happening is Mbare was the next township location in which people who were supposed to work for the capitalists, i.e. the black people who would come from the rural areas, they'll come and stay there. But they'll come and stay there on a, on, a, on, a, on a basis of, oh, we're just staying here temporarily. That land in Mbari 
was owned by the municipality and the laws at that time said that a black man could not live in a municipality household unless he had a job or he was working for himself i.e you couldn't be a vagrant there was actually a law which said you are a vagrant if you don't have a job imagine that so from the north in avondale developed a lot of other dells see like greendale or borodale and these are places in which individuals own land. And with the ownership of land, you can develop it and make it look nicer. And that's why in the north of Harare, there tends to be the richer people who live there. And in the south, you tend to have the poorer people. A lower density, higher density. Lower density, higher density. And I made this episode because I thought it would be interesting to see how the hip hop is expressing the divide between rich and poor. The divide between characters within the north and the south and if some of you are confused as to why i keep on going on about north and south you have to watch this video by the miz in which they document the differences in lifestyles between the north and the south of samora that will clear things up but if you're part of my zimbabwean audience you already know what i'm trying to say but anyway in this episode we're going to focus on the south of samora and what hip-hop looks like there and in the next episode we're going to look at north of samora beats so starting off today, let's take a look at what I consider as the best rapper in the entire land, T Gonzi. Uh, I love T Gonzi. And I love him even though he uses rapping elements which I think are corny or cheesy or a bit too elaborate. I can't deny that he is the best rapper in Zimbabwe right now. Because if you ask people who are the top three even best rappers in Zimbabwe, Two of those will probably be dancehall artists who are miscategorized as rappers, but definitely one of them will be T. Gonzi. And the fame and the notoriety all started with the 2015 track, Genio. The ghetto youth anthem about hard knock life, the haves and the have nots. Because the word genu roughly translates to good for you, you know? It's a good for you that is, well, it's not maniacal. It's not saying, oh, well, that's nice. It's not sarcastic. It's definitely a good for you in which somebody actually is congratulating you for having something that they don't. But it's shrouded with a pinch of envy. And that's the song. He says, hey, good for you for having this and good for you for having that. I really wish I had this, but meh, it's cool. One love at all. It's unlike the words of a famous rapper within a hit anime TV show. Boy, I'm telling y'all, boy, y'all lucky we kin, because if I was a different type of nigga, I'm tired enough how you were everything clean up out this bitch with nobody knowing. <laughs> Marriage is a very important culture in Zim. Everyone should get married, right? And make a kid and build generational wealth. But one of the steps in getting married is what we call lobola. And I think this is a process within many sub Saharan African countries. So lobola is part of paying the bide price to the parents which is ideally supposed to be a show of gratitude for the parents raising what you deem as wifey material. It's a way to get her parents' ultimate blessing. But in this capitalist system, you need assets which create cash flows within your accounts that cover all the liabilities that you have to pay for. In short terms, you can be broke, which doesn't mean you can't marry the girl. It just means you don't have the blessings which can lead to a life full of scars and general hatred between you and the in-laws. So hey, Tigon is right. Good for you if you had enough money to sacrifice for Lobola and be able to go out for a nice drink with the landlords. Because that's rare. See, the things that Tigon is envious of or is congratulating those that have, these aren't things of lavishes or stuff of crazy rich Asians. It's the quote-unquote normal stuff. It's the quote-unquote normal stuff that developed countries have just on a whim. But it gives you a sense of the hustle in Zimbabwe and the ghetto. 
genuine and natural swag. Come with no show on them up there, beyond the wash to the wag. Genuine casual, I'm in a cash, I'm in a bag. Turn up a coin, I'm a chicoro, I'm a sashap, I'm a kiss, I'm a buku. Genuine casual, I'm chingo taura, chirungu. Come with kachi taura, I'm not going to go on a shungu. I love this sequence. It's so smart and full of double entendres and connecting words. So first of all, he talks about the guys with the natural swag. The guys who get the girls. Well, the girls don't really like him. But it's like, who are these guys? Well, these guys are whoever he isn't like. And the girls say that he is gouache. Tigonzi is whack, apparently. Which is an important point, because to say somebody is gouache or is whack, this is like slang or lingo that is used by kids from the top of Samora, from the north. Along with Un, Bali, Yebi, Kwan, Lala, Kwan, Guinness, Shaking Cabins, Yud, <laughs> Yaidud, Chemzi. And it's more a comment about how girls want the guy with the flyest car and the sharpest trim and the coldest accent, which is some things that are more common north of the city than the south of the city. Cause let's not lie. Cause let's not lie. T Gunzi is not the type of rapper to be doing that self-depreciation that Skilo was doing. No, 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 no. He's just aware that these Yabies want somebody who he's not. Then he develops the point further by saying, cash in a bag. Which is a tautology, you see. Because cash, yeah, that's, that's physical money. But bag is two things. Bag can be slang for money, right? So he's saying cash two times. But then bag is also like a satchel, yeah? It's your school bag. Which is funny because in the next bar, then he goes, Look, good for you, those of you who had actual school bags to go to school with. Because we would go to school just holding our books in our hands. Then he says, which translates to, ah, oh, good for you, those who, who grew up speaking English. Because he explains that when he speaks in English, people say that he's ambitious, i.e. that he sounds fresh out the boat. And that ain't never a compliment. Never. But that links us back to a couple of bars when he was talking about how girls don't want him because he's undesirable in the terms of an upper-class English-speaking North of Samora kid. Do you see what I'm saying? Quick shout out to the capitalist landlord pigs who extort our most basic needs to shelter. But this is not a song about hey, the rich versus the poor. It's a song about those with knots looking at the haves and saying, damn, good for you for having that. I don't. But hey, let's keep it moving. Because yeah, like whilst having a property that you can get rent from is good and better than everybody, it isn't ensuring that you have middle class living, and especially in Zimbabwe, the kind of country where you don't really see the middle class in action for several reasons. And some of the haves in Zhenyu are necessarily rich and living life without problems. And the music video suggests this. Like this bar, right? It's simple. It's basically, ooh, I wish I was in the diaspora, you know, because right now I don't have water and I don't have electricity. But then the music video has these newspaper snippets of some upside down stuff going on between Zimbabweans and the UK. So it's like, damn, those guys have their own issues up there too. And the music video uses these sequences of newspaper clippings in the chorus to display problems that artists and T. Gonzi himself is going through. Problems related to alcohol, motivations and new collaborations that he was working on. And whilst I'm preaching this whole, ah, it's not about class item, there are little drops of class revolt. <laughs> Lyrical mastery because homie talks about the few with a lot. Vashoma translates to the few, right? I.e. the 1%. But the 1% of what, see? The 1% of Irish dancers? The 1% of Belgian kids covering urban grooves tracks? The 1% of those who can break John Swartz rapping Catholic ceremonial hymns in E flat and triple time swing? No, because the ending close of the bar clarifies. Anama hobo means to the many. And this is a poetic technique called juxtaposition. You're pitting two different things against each other by pitting the Vashoma and the Vahobo to communicate the uber rich in the country who live as if it's Europe while some kids have to carry their books in their hands as they head home from school. So actually I rate Zhenyu 10 out of 10. 
because it's a landmark tune in Zimbabwean hip-hop that really brings out the frustrations in this unequal land that we call home. But let's take a look at the last verse whilst we round up the review. So the last verse is interesting and frankly kind of confusing because we spent the last two verses with bars that are based off a Renu Javo format but T just starts freely spitting. And for all these years, I actually thought that maybe that wasn't T. Gunzi. That maybe that was somebody from his crew who had decided to get up on the mic so that people can get a break from T. Gunzi. But actually, it, I think that's T. Gunzi. And man, is this verse good. It's a tongue twister the whole way through. Essentially, it's a prayer to God saying, Hey, gee, God, I'm incredibly stressed by the obstacles that you've given me. And um, what about the obstacles of other people? They seem nice. Can we switch lives so that I can be at peace finally? It's a personal verse because it communicates his frustrations, asking his maker if his struggles are the best that he can give him. But you know what? Getting real, there's none of that. The reality in life is that we're bestowed with the challenges that we're bestowed with. And envy can be one of the most self-destructive vices that anyone can hold. Don't get me wrong, blessings are not equal in this life. But it's worth counting what's yours and taking account for it. Don't get me wrong, blessings are not equal in this life. But it's worth taking account of what you do have. And taking control of what you can in order to double those blessings. You work that strong and long grind until it pays off. And it's pointless to look at life as if it's a menu in which you can take your time figuring out what to order. Of course, for T. Gondi, it's difficult to reconcile with how much other people seem to have it better than him. But at the end of the song, what's theirs is not his, and what's his is not theirs. And if you don't understand... Yeah, say you, say you, say you.